It's been seven years since we got the last Planet of the Apes film, but now Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is hitting theaters, this time with Maze Runner trilogy director Wes Ball at the helm. There's no Andy Serkis as Caesar in this one, so can the film still capture the same tone and aesthetic without that mocap king? Many years after the reign of Caesar, a young ape goes on a journey that will lead him to question everything he's been taught about the past and make choices that will define a future for apes and humans alike. So the film takes place many generations after Caesar has passed. Apes are still the dominant species, with small bands of humans roaming around like feral animals. When one ape clan is attacked, a survivor named Noah goes on the search for any of his remaining tribe. He then has his horizons widened by meeting a human who behaves slightly differently than the ones that are huddled in masses like frightened animals. Now, the mocap VFX in this, they are flawless and stunning. I mean, it's difficult to discern that the apes we watch aren't real, aside, you know, from their ability for speech. But the hair, textures, small facial movements, and their twitches, I mean, even the emotive lines on the brows and the chins, they give each of the characters a great deal of reality. And the motion capture, it also works to instill some of the facial characteristics and mannerisms of the actors themselves, especially with Kevin Durant, who plays an ape named Proximus. And then there's the world building. This spectacular setup immerses us in an alien-looking Earth. Buildings have just rusted and been mostly hollowed out with overgrown trees, vines, and various foliage. And while my brain knows that almost all of what we're shown is not actually real, but instead it's computer generated, the depth and the attention to detail make every environment tangible. And these settings, they also work to establish a sense of tranquility, but one that is shadowy in spots to allow danger or threats to lurk. Now, like most of the Planet of the Apes films, at least with the reboots, there's a chunk of time taken to introduce us to the new surroundings and the characters. There's still an exciting opening sequence that lets us know what we're in store for, but the story itself, it doesn't rush the experience. Instead, showcasing clan dynamics and letting us get a sense of the new characters. Now, all of this might sound like I'm trying to downplay slowness or the length, especially with the movie clocking in at just at about two and a half hours. But I didn't feel any slowness or dragging during the introduction to this world. And I think throughout the film, there weren't really any spots that slowed in pacing. There's a good balance of exposition and drama within the action sequences. And it's not like the drama isn't intriguing either. Through this, we get to see a deepening of the dynamics between Noah, the ape, played by Owen Teague, and Nova, the human, played by Freya Allen. And this precarious relationship, it is sometimes frustrating and sometimes encouraging. The level of mistrust that's shared between the two, I mean, it is palpable and realistic. Well, you know, at least realistic in the sense that neither of the characters would naturally fully trust the other. And when we get action sequences, these are energetic, frenzied, and shot really well. There are quick edits here and there, but much of the time, the camera will chase and spin around characters as the melee or other action is occurring. And this enables us to see the movements, not hiding characters or even the effects, but instead putting them on full display. And because we're also watching apes just go after each other, their ability to climb and swing makes for some unique and exciting angles. And there's a good sense of motion and vigor that can be fast to watch, but it's still captured clearly without any unnecessary blurring. Now, I think to a particular action scene towards the finale and the way the sequence is filmed and edited, it creates wonderful anxiety and suspense. There's a pursuit taking place and the way the characters and camera maneuver around obstacles and elements take an already urgent scene and then amp it up with visual caffeine. I was having a blast with all of the creative shots that were being employed. Now for the story itself, I think it works well to progress the Ape franchise forward. Some actions by particular characters, they feel a bit underdeveloped or at least not explained to the level that they could have been. And this would have created a lot more depth for some of the motivations, which in turn would help to increase the story conflict. There's also some actual character background it was certainly lacking, where the story just simply assumed that the audience would go along with an idea despite not having any backing when items are introduced. Yeah, I mean, I know that part of that is all vague, but it's the most detail I can give you without going into spoilers. And then, for as much fun as I was having with the film, I think this story could have been applied to various other settings and surroundings, and it'd still have the same meaning. You know, I think what I'm trying to say is that while the story isn't necessarily generic, 
it's also not uniquely or solely a Planet of the Apes type film. Rise was a good origin, showing us how the virus began in the first place, and then that led to the growing conflict that we see in the subsequent two films. I'm not sure this one shares the same level of direct relatability with the franchise that it could. And it doesn't make it any less entertaining. It's still just a wild ride that's filled with excellent visuals and action. I mean, in the moment, while watching, it all clicks and the story fits with the universe. Once though you take a step back and look at it outside of the excitement of the viewing, it becomes pretty apparent how this particular story could have been used to craft many other types of films instead. And that goes for some of the messaging within the narrative as well. This isn't preachy or working off some agenda, but it does speak to the level of mistrust that grows and festers within groups. It also, though, showcases how power is its own drug and how it can warp the best of intentions into something that's a perverted version of what was intended. And that last part, that is a common theme that runs throughout all four of these contemporary ape films. So that continuity, I thought it's nice to see. Now, I had fun with the movie overall despite the vagueness of some of the character backgrounds and motivations, and then the lack of uniqueness the story maintains with the franchise, the visuals, effects, and action are immersive and captivating. From flawless mocap to excellently edited fight scenes, the movie as a whole creates a visceral world told through measured pacing to make an experience worthy of watching on the biggest screen possible. There's no sex or nudity, a tiny bit of hilariously used profanity, and then a bunch of violence. I give Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes four out of five couches. So which of the rebooted ape films is your favorite? For a long time, mine was Rise. But after watching the trilogy recently, I really think my new favorite might be War. Let me know yours, though, in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.